Saluti, my name is Sorella Moore and welcome back to this finance and freedom channel. It's a fact of life. Most of us spend more money than we should, but it's not always your fault. Over the last few decades especially, companies have learned to literally deploy forms of mind control in order to drain your wallet to put more money in their own pockets. In this video, I'm going to make you aware of these tactics so you can learn how to fight back against them or you'll be able to learn how to ethically use them in your own business. If you are brand new to this channel, we would love to have you here. So make sure you do subscribe. And if you find value out of these videos, it is so important that you also like these videos because it helps us to get the message of finance and freedom out to the world. So thank you in advance. We also have an exceptional newsletter. Leon is a superb writer and he writes beautiful stories filled with important education. So it's a really nice read and also you're learning at the same time. So you can sign up with the link in the bio. And finally, we have the pre-sale of our brand new course membership combo on all things finance and freedom. So if you wanna master this world even more, Check it out, link in bio for a lifetime access with a huge discount. This video is going to serve two purposes. One, I want to make you very aware of the tactics that are being used in order to persuade you to part with your money whenever you're going shopping, for example. By being aware of these things that they do in stores and online, you are able to resist the purchases and that means more money for you in your pocket in order to save, invest, and get you on the path to building financial freedom for yourself. The second reason is that if you choose to, you are able to use some of these tactics in your own business to sell your stuff more. Now, this channel is about financial freedom, as I mentioned, and one of the best ways and fastest ways in my my opinion because it's worked for me is to create a business of your own online business is my favorite of course however if you do not know how to sell your amazing product that you have one that is really helpful really important for people it actually uplifts people and gives them immense value if you do not know how to sell your product you're just running a hobby. And of course you might be thinking, hey Sorel, you mentioned that there's lots of unethical tactics being used in sales. Yes, they only become unethical if you are using it to sell stuff that is cheap, wastes people's money, destroys the environment. And you often see a lot of these tactics done in fast fashion. This is where I truly disagree with things. Now I will mention that this video is only going to cover a tiny portion of the tactics that I used in sales and marketing of products. I have been in marketing for more than a decade, as well as my partner, Leon, who is the co-founder of Abenantia. We have been in marketing ourselves for decades and so we have a lot of knowledge about this but we cannot put everything into one video. There's just a bit too much. <laughs> so if you like this video and if you find it very helpful please do let us know and we can do a follow-up to this absolutely. Also you might be aware of a lot of these tactics or once you hear them you'll realize is that it? It's that simple <laughs> because it really is that simple when you hear them you cannot unsee it. It just makes so much sense and oftentimes the simpler the strategy the more powerful the effects are. But without further ado let's get straight into this video. Social proof is a big one and a ton of brands use this in order to sway people to buy more products. Social proof is simply hacking your desire to fit in or to know that other people approve of your purchase or if they have made the purchase themselves the one that you're considering right now. Evolutionary, we are still very simple creatures and we still have the innate desire to be validated and to be part of the crowd. We grew up in tribal societies, so therefore we really needed to fit in because being ostracized from society was a really bad thing. Being different back in the day was meant life or death essentially. So you didn't want to be outside of the norm. This is why being seen as extremely weird and not normal can be very painful because it can mean so many different things on a very primal level. These days we have tribes that are more so cities and nations, but we still need that exact same validation. Biologists actually say that fitting in is hardwired into us and is passed down via genetics in order to help our species to survive. Biologist E. O. Wilson sums it up in this quote. The drive to join is deeply ingrained, a result of a complicated evolutionary process. The impulse to support the group at the expense of the individual is largely instinctual. This biological drive is hijacked by brands in order to sell you more stuff. There are many different ways that brands actually use this in order to sell you things, but I'm just gonna give you a few examples. The very first one is testimonials. I'm certain that you have seen the testimonials before of how much the customer loves the product or service, whether we're talking about eight out of 10 dentists recommend this toothpaste, or you know, you go onto Amazon and you see all these reviews. This is a very simple tool. It doesn't seem like it would have that much weight behind it, but it is one of the most effective tools you can use in order to sell more. It's so effective that studies have shown that 63% of people are more likely to buy something online from a page that has just one single review. But here's the dark side of this kind of social proof is that it's very, very easy to fake reviews. Views. Anybody can go onto a stock web page and get a photo of anyone and just add beautiful writing next to it about how great the product or the service is. It is even estimated that two thirds out of all Amazon reviews are actually fake. <laughs> 
that kind of sucks. Now, I obviously don't have anything against testimonials. I think they're so powerful and they're so important. If someone is impressed with your product or service, they will give you a testimonial. I've had this before. I've had lots of testimonials from the courses that I've sold and I have had them on my sales pages, of course, because it is so helpful. The problem is if you're faking it <laughs> because ultimately you have to realize that the social proof is doing one purpose only and that is to sell you better. So just be on the lookout. Just be aware that not everything you read on the internet, <laughs> surprise, surprise, is real. <laughs> the second social proof tactic that lots of brands use in order to sell more stuff is called earned media. Media is one of the most powerful tools that brands use in order to build trust with their customers. Let's say that you see something written up in either New York Times or the Fox News that talks about how great this product that you are considering to purchase is. Now, lots of people think, oh wow, this must be completely unbiased. This must be super trustworthy because, you know, Fox News or New York Times, they must be trustworthy themselves. It is so effective because whenever there's a third party talking about a product or a service, it is much more powerful than when the brand is just talking about how great they are themselves. A third party just reinforces how great they actually are. But what's even sneakier is that media outlets actually sell advertising these days to brands and it's called native advertising. So essentially you think that you're looking at a news piece, but it is 100% paid for by a brand. And oftentimes you are meant to be told if it's paid for by a brand, but lots of the times they just don't say anything. Whenever they mention the sponsored part and it's super, super small. I mean, it's not technically deception, but it's pretty close. And if not, it's extremely sneaky. So just be on the lookout. <laughs> just consider that maybe that could also be paid advertising. Also, another very common way to attach credibility and trust to yourself, either by being a person or a brand, is to use logos, very commonly seen and known and trusted logos on your own website. You've seen it on the websites, I'm pretty sure, either featured in or as seen in logo, 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 logo. Look at me, I'm so fancy. Now, I will admit, I totally do this on my own website. <laughs> to my own credit, I was legitimately featured in each publication I am showing off and I didn't pay for any of these features, but I can't really say the same for all of the brands that have this. The last way brands use social proof to drain your wallet is by using celebrities. Whether it's a celebrity being used in an online ad or on TV to promote a product or an influencer on social media, this type of advertising puts your social proof triggers into overdrive. Instead of just getting validation from some people, some random person's face, you are getting validated for the product or the service by someone that you already know, or at least you know their face. And it's even more powerful if you already really like or look up to the person. This is why influencer marketing works most of the time. This is why brands are willing to spend millions of dollars in order for celebrities to be the face of the product. Let's talk about influencer marketing for just a moment. In some cases, influencer marketing can actually be more powerful than the use of traditional celebrities. Let's say for example that you're watching an ad on TV or you see a celebrity on billboards. You might not like that celebrity. You might not care about that celebrity. That means that there could be a huge overspend on the brand's behalf in order to reach a huge audience and you might not care about that product. But when it comes to influencer marketing, the audience is very tailored already. And of course, there is already a positive association with the person that you are following because you wouldn't be following a person that you don't like. And a lot of people following really trust that the person, the influencer is going to be taking care of them, that they will speak truthfully to them and they'll not promote products, for example, that they don't believe in or they don't trust. And this is where the abuse of power comes in when it comes to influencer marketing, because a lot of influencers, they just do it just for cash. Yeah, I'm gonna say, if you wanna save more cash, just unfollow these influencers. There's always gonna be this pool of like, ooh, that dress looks so good and there's a 15% promotion from them. If I use their code, oh my God, I should totally go for that. And then you're gonna get lured in. You think you're gonna be resistant to this advertising, but it's really hard when you see a cute dress and your favorite influencer saying how great it is and how soft it is and all that jazz. You're gonna be like, oh, maybe just this one time, right? I will say for myself, I turn down 95% of brand deals because I don't need them. It's really awesome. I only promote the products that I truly love and I truly use. And I'm of the understanding that being ethical in my business and being trustworthy and really sticking to what I believe in is a success recipe for longevity. I'm not in this for a five second game. I'm really not. I think you guys are amazing and you work so hard for your dollars that I wanna ensure that I am there to help you and uplift you and not drain your wallet. Well done, Sorrel, let's get over it now. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> I will stop talking about myself. One more thing that I really wanna cover in this video, pricing mind tricks. 
If there was such a thing as real life Jedi mind tricks in order to sell more stuff to people, these would be some of them. And they are all based around pricing. They are so simple that it literally hurts. It hurts your brain and you don't think that it would be effective, but unfortunately uh, squishy brains <laughs> are very susceptible to these methods. The first one I'm gonna talk about is called the decoy effect. Dan Ali talks about this in his TED talk, which I'll link down below, where he talks about The Economist using this structure, this decoy effect in an ad for their subscription service. The Economist was running three different subscriptions of their magazine to their customers and these were online subscription for $49, a print subscription for $125, an online ad plus a print subscription for $125. Now obviously the third option sounds like the smartest choice because you get both the online subscription and offline subscription for the same price so why wouldn't you go for that? But he wanted to test this theory in real life so he asked 100 of his students at MIT which option that they would choose. When the students were presented with this option of Overwhelmingly, the choice was, surprise, surprise, the third option, that $125 option, which you might not think it's a big deal. Obviously, that makes sense. The next part, though, is what's going to shock you. This is going to show you how powerful this mind trick is. So he removed the middle option. So there was only the top and the bottom option left. He then presented these two options to 100 new students, and overwhelmingly, they all chose the $49 online option, showing how powerful the decoy effect actually is. The decoy in this instance, obviously, is the middle option is getting you to think that you need the bottom option and obviously why would you choose the middle one that's so stupid I actually almost got done for that I remember seeing this very for the very first time once on an online educational platform and I was like wait what did they make a mistake why would they price those two things at the exact same price that's so silly I would totally get that bottom one so it worked on me as well I recall that moment when I was looking at that I think I even spoke to Leon about it like hey they made a mistake no it's called the decoy <laughs> So the decoy effect works on three pricing options, but the number three is also very effective in sales. For example, buy two, get three. This is a tactic that's most often used in makeup brands, fast fashion brands. Also pages like Shutterstock use this in order to sell more footage. Of course, you're getting the benefit of getting something extra, but you didn't actually want that extra thing in the first place. That was just a tactic in order for you to spend more. Speaking of the number three in pricing again, there's also a thing called the center stage effect. This is a theory that when people are presented with three different product levels or three different pricing options, most commonly people are going to choose the middle one. For us humans, when we are given three price points, it gives us a reference to the quality of the product. For example, if we look at the lowest price point, we often think that that is going to be the lowest quality, so we don't often choose that one. And then we look at the most expensive one and we think, mm, that's kind of unnecessary, so I'm not going to go for that. So we go for the option number two. And how brands take advantage of this is that they actually have an idea of what they want you to pay for a product. And that is going to be often times the middle product that they want you to buy most of and then they'll create distractions by having a low price point and a high price point for similar versions of the product. We see this often in fuel or gas in America. People don't want to be buying the nastiest fuel so they won't put that in their car but they don't think it's necessary to put the most expensive fuel in so they're going to go for the middle option and they, the brands, have just made you do exactly what they wanted you to do in the very first place anyway. Apple has also done this very recently. They launched three different versions of their iPhones. Every single time they release a new iPhone now, there is three different options. There's the iPhone SE, there is the iPhone, and there is the iPhone Pro. And of course, Apple wants you to be most likely purchasing the middle option, which is just the iPhone, the standard iPhone. And statistically speaking, it has been shown that Apple actually sells the most of the regular iPhones. So the tactic works. So the next time that you see these tiers happening or any of the things that I've mentioned above, just think about it. Is this your choice? Is this really what you want to be doing? Or are you being persuaded by these very simple simple mind tricks in order for you to part more with your money because just remember in the end everything that is being done right now in all of social media all of marketing it is there to sell you on something to sell more for you to keep you a consumer people that are consumers are very valuable to brands and corporations but in the end you just want to make sure that you are in control of your own financial decisions and if you use any of these tactics in your business of course go go for it by all means hopefully you have an ethical business because come on we are creating Creating the world that we want to live in so if you are not an ethical business what makes you think that other businesses are going to be ethical lead the way be ethical I honestly believe that the more ethical you are it is a rarity these days if you're transparent if you're trustworthy if you provide exceptional value that is not a common thing these days so in order for you to stand out you just have to create an exceptional product and mean it and be there for people and take care of them with the product or service that you're creating and that area of marketing and business is wide open because a lot of people are trying to do 
these tacky sales tricks just to get you to buy more cheap fashion for example anyway i hope you guys enjoy this video hopefully it made sense i'm a little bit sick today i will admit so i'm trying my absolute best but i just want to make sure that i deliver the value to you every tuesday and thursday as much as possible i am on the recovery so i've been sick for a few days and now i'm on the way out which is really nice so hopefully it made sense if you're not yet subscribed to our newsletter make sure you check it out it is beautiful and of course check out our pre-sale to the membership that we have lifetime access for a huge discount and i will see you in the next one